Oh no, I can't find my item. I just sold it and I haven't a clue where it's at. That is something that I hear fairly often. Today, we're going to give you the best three ways to fix those situations. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about those times when you sell something that you've had up for a very long time and you just can't find it. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have it. Many people aren't aware of where they may have put it. And there's some very simple ways that you can go out there and figure out where you actually have that item without freaking out, without digging through your whole inventory. We're going to pop over there right now and show you one of the easiest ways and something that works for the majority of people who hit me up on this to find and fix that situation. So here's one of my items. I just picked some random item just to show you. I didn't want to pick one for something I sold because I don't want to have to worry about covering up someone's name. I don't give out my customers' names or anything along that line. This is just one of my items. It's a die cut. Doesn't really matter on what the item is. There's one key fact that is on every single item that you sell, which is right up here, which is the start time. October 11th, 2017 is when I put this specific listing up on eBay. And it was on at 3.34 in the afternoon, as you can see here. So I've got everything I need to know on at least when it was listed. That is the most important aspect of it. The majority of the time when someone can't find an item and they don't know what to, where to even look in their inventory, this is what I tell them to do. And most of those people, like 75 or 80% of everyone I tell this to is able to determine where the item is at by doing this. I'll look at the date and time and I'll go through my listings. Again, I've got like 26 or so thousand listings up here. So for me, it may be a big difference. It may take me a little while, but you can go through here. I've got it set up to show the start date for this reason, just in case something happens. Many times when somebody lists, like in this example here, there's no number on it on some of my items. Some of them are in certain spots and we already know that. Sometimes someone will forget to put something in there as to where the item is stored. It happens. I've done it myself. And other times you might have changed the bin it's going in at a certain point during a day and forgot to alter the title in the listing because you're just cranking out a whole bunch of listings and adding new items to your inventory. So there's many reasons why you might not have a clue. It's been too long. Some of the items like these here have been up for three years, literally almost to this day. So what I do is I go through the list of my items in my inventory and I have to figure out where it's at in there. And you can slide down to the bottom of the page and you can change it so it shows 200 at a time so you can look a little quicker here. And I'll go through page by page and in many cases I'll just simply go up to the very top of the page and there's an option on the top right where you can pick a specific page you want to go to. And that's exactly what I've done to draw me to this point. I've typed in a random page number that I'm guesstimating will be close. It may take you a couple minutes to figure out exactly what page this item would have been on by the time from again October 11th 2017 at 334 so October 11th 2017 319 324 again this item's still active so if you don't have it set up my way you may not see your item in here now I've got most items when they're sold will still show up in my inventory with a zero quantity so I'll still be able to see where they are at in my listing day frame here now I know that I listed ones right before again here's the one we were talking about the die cut lions die cut lions and right above it, I know I listed a whole bunch of stuff on the same time, the same frame, one minute before. Here, this one is 3.33. The lions were listed at 3.34, one minute later. So I can sit here and figure out that maybe I should be looking in P55. Well, P55 is a card, so I know that this is a big item. It won't fit in one of those bins. So I'll look a little farther, and I have and D right up here. And you know what? That is exactly where that item is. It's in and D. I'll go back in and actually add it into the category. But the point is that you can use these numbers to determine 
where your item or when it was listed. Most of the time, it's just something simple like that. I don't remember where I listed it. I forgot to put a notice on the bin or wherever it's going to be stored in. And I can literally look here, even if I don't remember what I listed before it or after it, or even if I don't remember a single thing I listed in that entire day that I listed the item that I just sold on, I can still go back in here, sort these by list date. So you're going to have to sort this column here again. Let me advance let me spread it out just a little bit there so you can see it's start date and you can sort this from you know oldest to newest newest to oldest if you got a ton of listings this is the easiest way to find it so just in a matter of minutes you can figure out where you stuck the items right before this and right after it and chances are why would you have gone somewhere else to store it chances are it's in one of the same locations of the items listed before it or after it so this is a huge huge plus for most people you don't have to panic you don't have to run around and look through all of your inventory you just have to look at the ones you listed right before it or right after it in most cases. So again, if I can't find something or there's not a number on it, this is all I have to do. I can literally figure out where everything is at by this determination. I stick everything, if you notice, in the same bins all the way across P55, P55, P55. The large ones, again, go in a specific area. So it's very, very easy. Again, I've got some AND D. And these were listed the next day. In some cases, if I can't find it on the same day and I listed it real late in the evening, the next day maybe I put it away with some new items so again it may not be exactly that day that you have to look but this will give you a 10 times better chance in finding the item than just randomly looking at your inventory and hoping something comes to mind now this will solve it for a majority of people 70 percent maybe higher I don't know I know that most people that ask me I tell them to do this and sure enough one of the other items listed right before it or after it leads them to where they stored the item in question that they can't find so that's always my first step. I will do that first no matter what before I spend any time doing any random searches through my inventory. Why would you want a random search? You want to be able to have a generalized area where it should be. Maybe you listed uh, some other oddball item and, and accidentally put the item you're looking for in with that one for some odd reason. So find out what you listed right before it and after it does solve a lot of that. Now let's say you have another item there like a record that you can't find. I haven't lost a record like that, but I'll give you another example. I had one that had a chip in it from storage, and I sold this one on Amazon. Again, it doesn't matter where you're at. You can use the same basic principle, and it went on Amazon for $36.99. I found the exact same record. Again, mine's damaged. I didn't want to have a hit. I didn't want to have any issues with it. So I found another one on eBay, that same exact record for four bucks. No exaggeration, it was four bucks. Many people don't realize you can sell on other platforms. They assume that if one other person sells something for four bucks, it's only worth four bucks. Marketing, keywords, all of that stuff plays into how you sell it and how quickly you sell it and how much you sell it. So I was able to buy it for somebody else and he shipped it really cheap, some insane amounts. I also asked him not to leave any advertisement in the package. Told him it was for a gift or whatever I said at the time. Doesn't really matter. You can tell him what you want or whatever the case may be. They're getting the sale. He got it for the, uh, the amount that he wanted for it. So he ships it to that person. Now, I know that's kind of like a drop ship, but I really hate to disappoint somebody. I don't want to take a ding. It was an accident. I technically had the record in hand. I did everything in my power. Now, if it took me spending more than what I sold the record for to acquire that same record to make the guy happy, I would have still done that, losing that amount of money. Because I wanted the sale to go through. I wanted the reputation to stay. So items like that, many of the times you can do something like that. I've had to do that a couple of times where a record was damaged during storage a 78 disc especially they sell better on Amazon but there is some risk in storing them just from having them standing up in a storage bin they they risk being cracked there could be a hairline that didn't show up when you're photographing and it pops up later so that would be an area that you can do this a lot of things like that you sold a movie a book or something like that you can't find it you went through you looked through your inventory you look through what was around it and you still can't find it that is an option to do that to cover that situation where you're not going to lose. You are still supplying the gentleman or the woman or whoever it may be who bought it from you with the correct item and hopefully you're making sure that you can find a copy that's in the same condition or better and then send it to them.
So what if you can't find the item? What if you can't find a like item to send to the person and purchase and mail off to them? Your last resort is to immediately tell that buyer that you've had an issue with it and you cannot find it. You've done everything. You've looked for it for hours. You're panicking. You're, it, it upsets you that you know you would not be able to find an item to mail it to the person. I would literally you know, tell them it was an honest mistake. This isn't something that happened before. I try due diligence to make sure that nothing is lost. I've got categorizing systems systems. I'll immediately refund your money, but I would also like to offer you free shipping on any other item in my store at any point in the future. Give them a name or a code or something to mention or tell them it's never happened before and you're obviously going to remember. So at any point in the future, if they do find something, you'll be happy to work with them on free shipping for it. You can also go further if it's some really rare or scarce item. Offer them a discount on the next item they may find as well as free shipping. Again, profusely Usefully apologize for the issue. Tell them you did everything in your power. You can even mention that you looked for others that you know that may have had that item that you could still supply it with them. If you did crack or damage the item during shipment, what I would recommend doing is taking a picture of it and sending it to them. Offer to refund their money and send it to them free as it is if they really want it that way. Or the other option, of course, free shipping and a discount on another item from your store. It's worth that to me. It's worth it to give away shipping on some other item. Again, you're going to refund them immediately for the entire 100% of their purchase and then apologize. If in a few days nothing comes back and they were pleasant, I would just reach out again. If you can't find anything now or you don't have the time or any other aspect of this, please don't hesitate to reach out now or any time in the future just to follow up and say, once again, I'm truly sorry for the issue. I feel bad and the whole works. It's not how I try to run my business. Most people are very understanding when that happens, as long as you're upfront and straight with them. I've had issues happen. We had a double set record from a, a very scarce label. It's something that I haven't seen for sale before at all. It's not in the price because it was a double record set. I set it down and I set something on top of it and broke the discs. I felt bad because it was something that I rescued from a barn sale. Something that you probably wouldn't have found. I couldn't replace it. I did everything in my power to try to make the situation right. At the end of the day, the gentleman was happy. He came back a few weeks later and saw something else that was about the same age and rarity, same genre of music. And with that, I offered him a 40% discount and I also gave him free shipping on it. I shipped it out immediately. The whole works. He was extremely happy. End of the day, I did what it took to make that person happy. It's going to happen. You're going to have a mess up somewhere. You're going to have a lost item. You're going to have something happen, especially when you have items up for years. That's why categorizing labeling where everything's at, labeling your bins, labeling your listings, whether it's a hidden skew that your buyer can't see or it's in the title, whatever the case may be, you have many options to put skews in there or bin locations wherever you're at. Amazon, it's the same thing. I have a custom skew line on all of my Amazon listings. Etsy, same basic thing. Custom skew lines or title uh, inclusions or whatever the case may be, depending on the site rules itself. So there's always options to do that. That's why storing something specifically in certain areas for certain types of items is so important. Accidents will happen. Those are my best recommendations. Those have solved pretty much every issue that I've had or I've recommended to somebody else on how to fix it. If you handle it nicely, properly, let them know immediately. Don't pan it off and keep pushing it off and hoping you know, you'll turn it up. If you can't find it, just tell them the truth. Anyway, that's what I have for you today. Take those in thought. It's an important issue. It's going to happen to some of you no matter what you do. Just be ready for it and now you know what to do to solve it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
Alice. How you doing, Eddie? Oh, hi, doing? Eddie. Hi. What's new at the soap factory? For you, Rosie. Wow, a whole bar of soap. Now, wait a minute. Come here. This is super lathering, Cam A. Get a load of that lather. Feel it. Oh. It has twice the lather of regular soap. I feel it. And twice the cream. I feel it. Imagine all that lather and all that cream making you feel soft all over. I feel it. I feel it. You do. Edward? Rosalie? Super lathering can't make. Now makes you feel soft all over. <laughs> 